Hello guys, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to initialize WebJL in a web browser. I already prepared a blank file that I'm going to open right now. And I use EditPad Pro, you can use any other editor. And I'm also going to open Chrome browser side by side so we can see the results in this view. Our first task is to create a blank HTML page. In order to do that, I already prepared some basic HTML that I'm going to paste into the left-hand side view. This gives us a good start. We can type JavaScript in here, and the canvas is going to go in between these two body tags. First, I'm going to actually open this file in the browser. I'm going to drag it in here, and it's blank. There's nothing at this point. In a web browser, OpenJL renders its results inside the canvas tag. So the first thing that we have to do is create a canvas. Let's assign an ID to our canvas and call it GL. The next thing you want to do is to create an object that will refer to the canvas tag. I'm going to call this object canvas and it will equal document.getElementById and we're getting the canvas by ID so because our canvas ID is JL we're going to put it in here. Now that we have a link to our canvas object we can request a WebGL context from it. The canvas object has a function called getContext Right now, browsers are still evolving in terms of supporting OpenGL. Each browser has a different way of requesting OpenGL context. In order not to miss the one that's available in the current browser, we need to check for at least four of them. I'm going to create a new variable, GL, and assign our first potentially available context, WebGL. Again, there's a possibility that we might need to check for three other ones, and I'm going to add them right here using an OR operator. One of them is experimental WebGL, OR Another one is Moz WebGL for Mozilla or Firefox browsers. And the last one is WebKit 3D. So this is basically saying first get WebGL. If it doesn't exist, fall back experimental. If that one doesn't exist, fall back on the other one. There are possibly other ones in other browsers, but this is enough for this demonstration. Point: If your browser supports it, then your GL context will become available. And we can start using this object to call OpenGL functions. On the other hand, if it's not available, we need to output some kind of a message, at least to the console. Saying that
your browser doesn't support OpenGL. Once your WebGL context object is initialized, it will allow you to call OpenGL functions and access its properties. To demonstrate this, let's call the first OpenGL function called get supported extensions. Just for reference, I'm going to output to the console our GL object and also the extensions that we just got. Now at this point I would like to launch this code in the browser, but there's one more thing. Because of how browsers download information from top to bottom, if we run this code right now in the browser, it will produce an error at this line. And that's because the page hasn't finished downloading yet, and we're already getting the canvas by ID. In order to prevent this error from happening, we have to wait until the page is finished downloading. For this reason, I'm going to put this entire code inside of a function. So I'm going to create a function around all of this code. Initialize WebGL. And at the bottom here, we're going to close the function. And now we're going to call this function from the onLoad attribute within the body tag. Equals, call the function. Doing it this way ensures that initialize WebJL function is called only after the web page has finished downloading. I opened the Chrome console on the right hand side to see what these commands generate. We will output the GL context object and the extensions list. So let's go ahead and run this code in the browser. This has accurately given us the WebGL rendering context object. Its prototype includes all OpenGL functions and properties. You can browse through them just to see what they are. These are the functions that you can use. All of them are attached to the GL object. And you can call any of these functions from the OpenGL library. In addition to that, we have OpenGL extensions that are supported by your video card in your browser in this list. One of the first things you want to do after you have initialized a WebGL context is to set the OpenGL viewport dimensions to the same dimensions of your canvas. So let's go ahead and do that right here. And we're going to start by getting the context object. And one of the properties that OpenGL has here is viewport width. And we want to make it equal canvas width so that they are the same. And the same goes for viewport height. Now we have finally gotten to a very interesting part in this tutorial where we're actually going to clear out the background color of Canvas using OpenGL. We now have to use 
RGBA format to specify the color with which we will clear the background. OpenGL context object gives us a function called clear color in order to do that. But calling this function alone is not going to clear our canvas with a black color. We now need to let OpenGL know that we actually want to do it. This is done by letting OpenGL know that we want to use color buffer bit. Only at this point, if I refresh the browser, we will see that there is a black background applied to our canvas. We have just successfully initialized WebGL in our browser.